All right, everybody. This is Dolph87. This is the first ever Dragon Ball Z theory video that I have done. Now, what prompted this theory video was the fact that two weeks ago, a buddy of mine and myself were having a Dragon Ball Z debate. Now, I haven't seen this buddy for about a year, and we decided to get together and talk. Whenever we talk, we talk about Dragon Ball Z because it's a, it's a love that we both share because we both grew up watching Dragon Ball Z. It's what we did. Every day after school, we would watch Toonami and we would just lose ourselves and escape in this mystical world of anime and fighting and righteousness and honor and pride and it was wonderful. It was an escape. It was beautiful. To a child back in the day, there was nothing better. Having said that, when me and my buddy were talking a couple of weeks ago, he went over a theory with me. And I actually explained this theory to a couple of friends of mine tonight, which prompted me to look on YouTube to see if there was any theories out there similar. And there were a few, but let's get right down to the nitty gritty. The theory that Majin Buu was a god of destruction. Now, let me explain this. What do we know about Beerus? We know that Lord Beerus shows up in Battle of the Gods. He wakes up. He had had a dream about a Super Saiyan God and wanted to meet one, so he went to Earth, and, well, you know the rest. But what do we really know? We don't know much. We know he's a God of Destruction. We know he's the God of Destruction, which means, would signify that there's multiple gods, but of each genre, there's only one god. He is the god of destruction. There might be a god of life, a god of love, whatever and what have you. But he is the one and only god of destruction. So there you go. Having said that, let's 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 move on. I digress. What do we know about Majin Buu? Well, if you read the manga, if you watch the Japanese version, if you watch the English version, then a lot of you mistakenly assume that Bibbidi, father of Bobbidi, created Majin Buu. But that's because you know that Bibbidi originally controlled Majin Buu. But if you actually listen, it is very much clearly stated that Majin Buu has been around since the beginning of time. Since the beginning of the universe, there has been Majin Buu. Alright, so let's, let's explore that. What do we know about Kid Buu? What do we know about Kid Buu? What we know is that it took how many wishes from the Dragon Balls? How many people dying? How many Earthlings putting pretty much all of their life energy into the Spirit Bomb to kill him? But before that, what was Kid Buu doing? As soon as he cre reached his Kid Buu form, he was destroying planets. He was teleporting. Now, again, he was teleporting. It was not instant transmission. He was not cell. He did not just instantly fucking... He didn't instantly know the moves and techniques done by everybody else. No. No, no, no. And a lot of you are going to argue, well, he had absorbed Goku technically when he ate him and Vegeta together, so he probably knew... No, he does not work like Cell. It does not work that way. He's a god. Let me explain. So he was teleporting from planet to planet, galaxy to galaxy, destroying effortlessly. Effortlessly. Kid Buu had one objective and one objective only. To destroy. 100% to destroy. That's what he was doing. Hands down. That's what he was doing. Not to mention, the fights between Majin Buu, Kid Buu, is what I mean, Kid Buu, Vegeta, and Goku, he was decimating them, but he was trolling them the entire time. He was laughing, he was dancing, he was mocking. Kid Buu was not once ever serious at all during that entire battle. Not once. And it took multiple wishes with the Dragon Balls. It took mul multiple times of Goku and Vegeta getting their asses kicked. It took multiple times with the Sensu Beans, and it took 
pretty much everyone giving up almost all of their life energy to that spirit bomb to put an end to Majin Buu. Now, let me say this. A lot of people have asked the question, you know, if Beerus has been a thing for such a long time, how come he never showed up in Dragon Ball Z? Well, I'm here to explain that right now. Lord Beerus, the god of destruction, never showed up in Dragon Ball Z because Lord Beerus was not relevant during Dragon Ball Z. Because during Dragon Ball Z, Lord Beerus was not the god of destruction. No. Because as I stated at the beginning of this video, for each genre of god, there is but one. And at the time, Kid Buu, Majin Buu, was the god of destruction. A lot of people will be like, no, Beerus was just asleep. And that's why he didn't do anything and he didn't care. Let me explain something. Whis would not have been asleep because Whis is Lord Beerus' advisor. And do you not think that with Kid Buu destroying planet after planet after planet after other world, when you start destroying dimensions, I gotta say, the universe is literally being threatened. And do you not think that another god at that point would do something about it? Yes, yes they would. And Lord Beerus didn't do anything about it. Not because he was asleep. Not because his advisor, Whis, did not wake him up. Because he was not relevant. Because Kid Buu, Majin Buu, at the time was the god of destruction. When Majin Buu was killed by Goku... Thus, a new God of Destruction was created. Let me explain further. In the movie Battle of Gods, Vegeta knew exactly who Lord Beerus was. Right? Yes, he had heard of him when he was a child. Now, it's kind of vague, but I mean, it, it's, it's hinted that at that particular time back in the day that he was a god of destruction. But do you really think he would have been mingling with planet Vegeta and King Vegeta at the time if he were really a god? No. No, no, no. He was most likely powerful, yes. Anyways. That's pretty much all I got, guys. I mean, like I said, I mean, it, it speaks for itself, I think. If you guys disagree, well, that's fine. Comments below, subscribe, like, whatever. Let's do it. Bam.